You ever sleep with a wool blanket and a tarp and then you realize you're just not comfortable? Well, today we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna give you five tips on how to become more comfortable with your tarp and wool blanket when camping. So what's up guys, Dan here, Cold Cracker Bushcraft. That's right, it's one of the questions I have recently been asked over and over and over, and that is, um, I'm camping with my wool blanket and my tarp and I just can't get comfortable and I'm up all night feeding the fire and I'm cold and I'm, I'm uncomfortable and, and how do I do this? And you say you do it all the time and you're comfortable and I don't know and it, yes, it can be, it can be very confusing, it can be very uncomfortable, but that's why I'm here, to help you out with that little bit of a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down into what I believe is the five hottest tips I can give you for wool blanket and tarp camping. You put these things in place and I guarantee your night is going to be that much better. So uh, let's, get, let's get rolling with it. Tip number one, adventure slash skill. So you decide it's time to sleep out under a tarp with just a wool blanket, but before you do that, you need to take a specific approach. And what I mean by that is that sleeping like that has skill to it. You have to learn how to make this work appropriately, and that's gonna vary depending on your location, the season, the activity you're participating in. Um, did we say weather, temperature? All these things come into play. So you your skill set, the more you do this, just like any other skill, if it is flint and steel or friction fire or napping an arrowhead, the more you do it, the better you're going to become at it. And the second part of that is your adventurous spirit. Okay, now before you think this is going to be a bunch of baloney, all these five things he's telling us, just we're going to get to the real hard, intense stuff. But this is literally part of it. This is what I think is one of the most important things um, is that adventurous spirit. Because when you're camping like this with a wool blanket and a tarp, Okay, um, you need to understand that that is never going to replicate what it's like being at home in air conditioning or a heated room with a nice big thick pillow top mattress and a down comforter and 947 pillows and some lady feeding your grapes. Like it just is never going to be like that. So I think a lot of people, they associate that level of comfort to the level of comfort that they should have in the woods and they try to make them to match. And although that's a good thing to to be comfortable and content while you're in the woods, you do need to realize that you're sleeping on the forest floor, exposed to the elements, with moisture, with dampness, with a lot of other things going on um, that are against you. So no matter who you are, you're never probably gonna lay down and have that perfect night's sleep the first, second, tenth time you do this. It does take time to get it figured out. And I can even say myself, if I don't camp for a while, that style, okay, say I'm hanging in a hammock or I'm using the yurt for for a while and I go back to the ground. It's a change, right? My first night of sleep there, it's a little bit uncomfortable at times. I'm up, I might get a little bit chilled at times, but there are things you could put in place. So you gotta have that adventurous spirit that hey, this is a skill, it's something fun, and it's a little challenge I'm gonna take on. Number two, your bed sucks. Now I'm not saying that to be rude to anybody, but generally, um, at least at classes I've seen over the years, over and over and over and over again, individuals do not make a thick enough browse bed or debris bed underneath them. So what does that have to do with sleeping with a wool blanket and a tarp? Okay, so when you lay directly underground, the mass of the ground is way larger than you, so it is gonna constantly draw heat away from your body. And because of that, that that is generally what makes the vast majority of people cold when they sleep on the ground. So if you're going very pure, just a tarp and just a wool blanket, your debris bed underneath you needs to be thick. Thick is not one or two inches. Thick is not three or four inches. Thick is eight, nine, 10, 12 inch thick compressed mattress. That much compression and density between you and the ground is going to keep you extremely warm compared to if you don't have that. Now, 
here's the thing. That sort of sucks to do, okay? And at the end of the day, we're coming out here to have a good time, right? So what I tell people all the time is this. Just because you're sleeping with a wool blanket and a tarp, all right, doesn't mean you always have to go that route. Should you experiment with it and try and go back to number one, that adventurous spirit? Yes. But depending on your situation or depending where you're located, I mean, take a sleeping pad with you, right? You put a sleeping pad down or make some a debris bed, then put the sleeping pad on top of the debris bed, and then you get under on top of that with your wool blanket you got something going on there so being able to protect yourself from the ground is huge number three it's hot in her <laughs> So if you graduated around 2000, um, that's when I graduated high school, you're gonna remember that Nelly song, it's getting hot in her, so take off all your clothes. I am getting so hot, I'm gonna take my clothes off. And then you freeze to death. Now, most people aren't taking their clothes off, but here's my point to this and why the Nelly song is somewhat important. Um, fire is like the third part of this tarp and wool blanket scenario. Everybody puts a fire out in front, which is good. Yes, put the fire out in front. If it's cold weather, that fire is gonna help warm you up. But here's the next thing I hear from people is I was up all night and I was feeding the fire. Uh, yes, yes, that that is just part of, go back to number one, the adventure of it, okay? Um, wood does burn, and it burns up and there's nothing left of it. So yes, if you want the fire all night, you're going to have to consistently feed that fire throughout the night. Now there are the fires that we've done in other videos, they're like self-feeding, they might last a while, otherwise they just flame up, but there is more to it. And what I mean by that is, um, I'm, we're gonna use a scale, all right? And this is gonna be an obnoxious scale. This is not real, but we're gonna say 100 degrees, you're comfortable, zero degrees, you're freezing to death. So you're sitting around a campfire at night, which that's like what we do, right? We get the campfire and we're sitting around it and we're warming up, maybe we drink a hot chocolate and then we lay down and we throw more wood on the fire. So that temperature hits that 100 degree mark and we're nice and warm, we have the wool blanket over us, thick debris bed and we're just, oh, Dying, right? Um, not dying, dying with with luxury, okay? So we're acclimated now to this extremely warm temperature. So what happens now is as the fire dies down and possibly goes out and we're in this nice deep sleep, dreaming about tomorrow's um, hunting trip or whatever we're doing, and we start to hit that 50 degree mark, our body starts to get uncomfortable, the fire goes out, now we wake up and we don't wanna move because we're freezing, and next thing you know, we're getting close to the zero degree mark and we are shivering and we're froze and we're miserable because we got to get up and feed the fire. So what's happening is we're hitting both extremes in this case. We're hitting the extreme of super comfortable, like I wish it was like this all day, all night in this shelter to I, I want to go home and sleep in my bed or stop at the Holiday Inn or something, okay? So we're going to the extremes. So you got to find that, that happy medium. So what I mean by that is we're sitting by the campfire, we get the fire, it's situated, it's burning normal, we lay down. We might be acclimated at that 50 degree mark, okay? Again, fake numbers, but you're getting it's easier on a scale 1 to 100. So we might be acclimated around that 50 degrees. So if we go from 50 to 25, maybe we have a little chill, but we're not dying. It's not that extreme swing. So being able to keep your fire just low and controlled and enough to throw some heat, but not too much, um, is very important when camping like this. Now, there's no way around having to get up and feed the fire. So a couple tips with that. If you camp with, with your friends, um, you can also set their shelters up close that everybody pr at night gets up at different times and feeds the fire. If you wear some type of smartwatch, there's a really cool feature. And I know this is like tech, like techno woods guy kind of stuff here, but you can set your watch for every hour and a half to get up. That's about how long those, most fires are gonna last till they're just embers. And um, set it to vibrate, okay? So it just vibrates lightly on your wrist. It doesn't scare the whole camp. It doesn't frighten you wake up, it just vibrates a little bit on your wrist, and then you wake up, feed the fire, make it comfortable for yourself to do that, and go back to bed. That'll warm you up just enough. Don't overload the fire, one or two pieces of wood, back down, keep that low control temperature, 
and you'll be good. Number four, size does matter. So we have already went through three hot tips and we haven't even talked about the wool blanket. And the wool blanket, most people would be like, this is like the quintessential part of this, the wool blanket camping. But we're three deep and we didn't even get to it. And here's the thing, it does matter, right? That is your top cover, that is what is trapping your body heat, that's what is keeping you warm per se, other than the fire and a debris bed, which honestly is a little bit more important than the wool blanket itself. But when it comes to the wool blankets, here's the thing, size does matter. So here's Here's two different wool blankets, okay? The one we sell on our site and a hand-loomed one that I got years ago from a man who did reenactments, okay? Um, both of these blankets, as you can tell, they look size-wise, okay, a little bit different. This one looks a lot bigger and fluffier. This is a little bit thinner. This one is about six times the price of this one. So um, you're wondering, well, do you get more out of this or not? So here's the thing. Um, the more loft it's in a blanket, the more heat it's gonna be able to trap, the better it's gonna work for you, okay? But with that normally comes a higher price tag. So what I have found over the years using all different wool blankets, everything from Harbor Freight wool blankets to our wool blankets to hand loomed wool blankets, that it really comes down to the footprint, the size of the blanket itself, okay? Not as much how thick it is. Now, there is a point where the blankets, you can go like to the Goodwill and you find these blankets that grandma had that are 100% wool and they are so thin, you literally hold them up and you can see through them. Not good there, okay? So we're not looking for something like that, but like the military um, vintage blankets, you see like the green ones from World War II, that thickness, that's about the average thickness um, around the scope of wool in general anyway unless you go hand loom. So we're just gonna forget about that at this point and talk about what most people are gonna carry with them. So having a bigger footprint is gonna do a few things. Number one, it's gonna allow wool to get underneath you and it's going to give you enough room below your feet and enough room if you wanna pull it up over your head throughout the night to help trap the heat. Having all that extra wool also means that you can even double your blanket over and lay it over on top of you. There's a, a ton, which I know I did videos on this in the past, of different wrapping methods that can help you along with this. Now, what I can say is that a single twin wool blanket is never gonna cut it, okay? Maybe on a warm day with a good debris bed and a fire you can get by, but as the temperature drops, your wool blanket needs to get bigger and bigger. So a, a few options with this. Number one, take two twin blankets and sew them together. That is gonna give you a big enough blanket. I did that for years. If you remember my old videos with my gray Harbor Freight blanket, that's literally what I did and it worked great. I know all my instructors followed my cue with that years ago and did that and it worked. It worked great down into single digits with all them other things in place. So try to get a blanket that's queen or king size. That is going to work best for you. Now depending on the temperature you're gonna be sleeping in is gonna depend on how much blanket you actually want. So what I tell most people is it's really gonna depend on you, right? So for me, down to about 30 degrees, a single wool blanket with everything else that we talked about in place is gonna work fine. But below that, why struggle? Make it more comfortable for yourself. So you can always take two blankets and literally lay them on top of each other and put a whip stitch all the way around. Double thickness blanket. Does it suck carrying it in? Yeah, but we're bushcrafters. We don't walk around anyway. We usually walk a couple hundred yards and set up camp. So wool blanket size does matter. Um, no twins, anything bigger should be good. And finally, hot tip number five, cut off your fingers and toes. So I don't mean actually cut off your fingers and toes, that's not what it was, but I had to come up with something that sounded goofy for the title. But most people do in the morning say, oh, my fingers, my toes, they're froze, ah. Uh. And then you say, well, okay, uh, what kind of socks do you have on? Well, I took my socks off, or I have my socks on from today. Okay, well, did you have gloves on? No. Oh, okay. Um, did you put a hat on? No. Mm, okay, so they're all things that can help in colder weather. But for some reason, again, we relate being in the woods to this comfort of home. You're like, at home, I don't wear a hat. Well, we're not at home. So let's start with the biggest heat loss thing, and that is our head. So putting a hat on top of your head when you sleep is gonna help tremendously. It's gonna trap a lot of heat inside, and it's gonna keep you a little bit warmer. So what I recommend is to have just a beanie that's looser fitting. Um, keep it just with your sleep gear. So when you're gonna go to sleep, you put your loose fitting beanie on, and you're good to go. Now, if you're not a beanie person, then you don't have, I should have just threw it. I threw it and caught it because I didn't want to bend down. But if you're not a beanie person, the next item that is definitely usable, okay, is one of these hoods. So the hood, your face sticks out here, right? What 
I like about these is number one, it's trapping the heat around your neck, okay? They're very loose fitting. And then you could pull it up over your head and trap some of that heat inside. They take up very little room and uh, they're very comfortable to sleep in in colder weather. So that is also a way that you can take care of your head. Now, moving downward, a loose fitting pair of gloves. This can be a game changer if your hands get cold all the time. Just make sure that nothing is super restricting. No hats super restricting, no gloves. You want them looser like this, okay? Nice big loose gloves. This is gonna help a lot too. And then moving downward from there, big heavy wool socks. These things are gonna help tremendously, okay? If you put on clean socks at night like this, okay, with some airflow around them, this is gonna be comfortable and it's gonna keep your feet warmer than if you did not nothing else. So there you go, you bushcraft maniacs. You are ready because the fall is here. You can tell there's the wind's blowing. I have a flannel on. Actually, it's a little bit nipply around. So it is like, ah, oh, it is that time of the year that we're gonna be doing this stuff. So be adventurous with this. Go out and don't assume it's gonna be just like camping at home and test yourself. See how good you are and how you can figure this stuff out. Because at the end of the day, bushcraft's just a bunch of little problems we have to solve in order to make life better. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this cleared the air Away with some of the wool blanket, tarp, camping questions and why it's uncomfortable and how to make it more comfortable for yourself. So if you like this video, please hit the subscribe and like button below. Also check us out over coldcrackerbushcraft.com. Until next video, camp with your wool blanket because it's the perfect time of year and stay in the woods.